Uh, welcome and thank you for coming. I'm Jason, one of the co-organizers for the group Meetup, um, and we are the C++ user group. Uh, I'd like to make a land acknowledgement. The land that we're on, land which we are meeting on, has been the site of human activity for over 15,000 years. We recognize the enduring presence of indigenous people connected to and on this land. We're grateful for the opportunity to gather here and work in this community, and we commit ourselves to the work of reconciliation with indigenous peoples. Um, today, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Autodesk, for the space and food. Um, Casey, who is not here, who organized uh, the pizza and the cookies. Brent, thank you for picking up the cookies. Um, uh, Jay Frog for providing the swag on the table. Feel free to grab some on your way out. And sponsoring the AV for today. And for meeting C++ for publicity and resources. Uh, also like to thank Mike, our other co-organizer. Co um, includes C++, which is a uh, global, inclusive, and a diverse community for developers interested in C++. Um, if you're not a member of the Discord channel, please join. You will not find a more helpful and knowledgeable C++ community. Um, we'd also like to thank Kate Gregory, who is not here tonight, for her support and guidance. Um, upcoming C++ events, in case you're not aware of this, uh, we have the Summer ISO C++ meeting in Germany, if anyone's going to be in Germany. Uh, there's CppCon in 20 in September uh, 15th through the 20th. Is anyone here show of hands going to CppCon? Maybe a couple. Okay. Uh, we got the Fall ISO meeting in Ireland in November and the ACCU Autumn Conference. Um, the C++ TO is closely affiliated with the ACCU. Um, we forgot our publications today, so come. In September, we'll have our publications. You can look at the ACC ma magazines. And then there's a meeting C++ in November as well in Berlin, Berlin, Germany. Today, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Diego Lozado. He is the co-organizer of the Madrid C++ meetup, uh, co-founder of the Conan C++ package manager, and leading the Conan team at JFrog. Today, he will uh, tell us about Tell us about Conan, the open source C++ package manager, and how it can be used to manage C++ dependencies. Diego? Thank you. <laughs> so a couple of disclaimers. First, this is a shameless self-promotion talk. So now I've said, please, all this work, take it. Take it to your friends. I, we are, I'm not taking it back. OK. So the other thing, uh, many times in these meetups, I, I'm asked about not only the Conan the tool, but also about uh, different things, about personal things, about the history of Conan. How did we get here? The startup in the process, the, the, the job we, we do. So to, for today, I'm trying something different. I'm sorry, your experiment is the first time I've prepared this talk uh, as a new talk for this meetup. Uh, so let's see how it goes. So it starts with a, a poor soul, a C++ developer, that uh, wanted to build a robotic application. A robotic application was, was using several libraries. It was using uh, 0MQ for getting an image from, uh, from a server. It was using OpenCV computer vision library to process the image, and it was using other, other libraries as well. So what he was dreaming of was something like this. He had to work in Windows because bosses, customers, and also Linux. So he wanted to be able, hey, I want to build my application. My application, I write my code here, I'm using OpenCV, I'm using here ZeroMQ. I want to build my application, right? So he was dreaming of something like, this is my video server. So he wanted to be able to do something like this. Conan is told, hey, this is fetching some dependencies. Actually, all he had to do was, hey, I need these libraries here. I want zero MQ, this version. I want FMT, this version. I want OpenCV, this version. And I'm going to use CMake as my build system. This is everything he wanted to tell the system. Hey, please, install this for me. And when he did Conan install, he got a bunch of things, not only these libraries, but also And I have no internet connection, so this is not displaying. It should display the, the graph. 
of the dependencies. The important thing here is that when I did the kernel install, it retrieved not only my dependencies, but also the transitive dependencies. This protocol lasted like about half a day to install, set up these dependencies in this machine. Because all the transitive dependencies are like libgpf. They have to be built. They have to be configured. Uh, uh, transitive is OpenCV, like set lib. It also has to be installed. It has to be configured. So, and also, once the dependencies were installed in this machine, he wanted to have a simple integration, something that doesn't depend on someone guessing where the dependencies are. And probably, if you know CMake, you know what I'm talking about. Find package. That night. Okay, so if you see here, I t told the system that I'm going to use CMake. And the system, what it did, it created a CMake file for me. This is because I sp specify here this generator. So if we check this file here, it's very, very straightforward. It contains the include directories for my headers, library directories for my libraries, the library names, the, the compiler flags that I need to use to actually use these libraries. The same for every single library that I'm using, and also an aggregation of all the libraries that I need to link with. With this, the CMake is this is straightforward. It's natural CMake. The only thing you need to, to do is include the file that has been generated, and the rest is a standard CMake. So with this, the developer experience was create the project as usual. In this case, I'm using Visual Studio 15, 64 bits, like by default. I could open my, ID, my IDE and I could build, but in this case, I'm going to build from the command line. Yeah, of course, there are a few warnings. You know, size T to integral conversions. It's going to be fine. The application is not going to crash because of this. Actually, it will. <laughs> and that's it. That's an application running OpenCV, Serum Q format with all the transitive dependencies in Windows that had no of these dependencies two minutes ago. And of course, why not aiming to dream? Why not dreaming about exactly the same process in all operating systems, in all platforms? even cross-compiling. If I move to Linux, I want exactly the same. Conan install will retrieve and install the libraries and the transitive libraries, make and run. These are exactly the same versions built with exactly the same source code as the previous one. You know, in Linux, they think, oh, I will use the system package manager. Okay, good luck, because it contains OpenCV version two, some, two point something, and you want to use OpenCV version three. And then now you use to, uh, another repo, a new, another app origin, or build from source, and you need to start figuring out how. Okay, so this poor developer, it was me like about, about seven years ago. Okay, I used to be a professor uh, at university uh, and also I was basically a full-time C++ developer. I was working also for industry, a lot of industrial projects. I was doing some research. I was leading teams developing C++. Um, so I felt this pain and I said, okay, let's research. Someone in the world might be fixing this, right? And nobody was doing it. So I had a crazy idea. I submitted the idea to a startup contest, and we won. Okay. And then we were able to find some venture capital, and they founded our, our startup. So I quit university. I quit a tenure track professorship at university, which is a bit, a bit crazy, especially in Spain, that you can be living very relaxed for, the, for the, your whole life. And I started this, this startup was called Bcode. In Bcode, we try to do many things. First, we, we try to do a dependency manager for all the languages, all the programming languages out there. W why not? I mean, my pain was C++. 
But if you are doing a dependency manager, why not doing the same for all the languages? It was a pretty cool idea. Actually, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. So we were changing, and from all languages, we were focusing on C and C++, as it was the original, the original problem. And we also, we did a lot of mistakes in the process. For example, one of the things, it was a, it was a startup, it was a company. It was venture capital back, backed. So we needed to have a business model. So our source was closed at the beginning, and that was a huge mistake. We soon realized that there is no way a package manager can work if it is not open source. So we had to do all the process to convince the investors, and we finally, we managed to do it open source. And eventually we started to get some traction in the open source community. So those are, that graphic there is the API calls that were done to our server. So they were growing a steady 20% month over month. It was pretty cool. But then in July 2015, we had to file for dissolution, bankruptcy. We didn't make it. Why? And it, it made a lot of sense. We were not able to, to uh, raise another funding, another, another round of funding. Okay? Why? We were growing pretty well in open source. But no companies, no companies were buying into our products. Not, not at all. So the investors realized that. They say, hey, okay, this is a cool project, but it's not a business at all. And it probably will never be a business. And they decided to step back. So it really, it was, it was painful. Okay? If someone is into startups or is thinking about going into startups, you can talk to me later. I have a lot of, lot of, lots of advice. It was really painful, but we learned a lot of things. Especially we learned what not to do, the things that, that shouldn't be done. So when we closed the, the company, uh, first I established with my, with my CTO, uh, we started to do freelancing. Okay, we didn't want to really work for a company, so we started uh, the freelancing thing, and we started to chase customers and to work for customers, especially in Python, uh, Django, uh, Angular, JavaScript, all those trendy things that you can actually get gigs in like three months very quickly that will last not forever. If you are trying to do the same in C++, you are probably getting a two years project, and we wanted like quick projects, basically to pay the bills. We need to pay the bills, because one of the things that we we learned is that we, we had failed. It was our fault. It was not the market fault. So we tried again. So while we were freelancing, we say, okay, we did something wrong. Let's try again. And let's build something from scratch. And in a very few months after the bankruptcy, we were able to release uh, the first version of Conan in Conan.io. And we did exactly the opposite that we did in the previous startup. The first thing, we released the first version as open source with the most permissive uh, open source license that is MIT. You can do everything with it. Very lean. We learned that the product or the product has, fee, has to be like very focused. So I think the first version, it had only like about 10,000 lines of code, which is really, really small. But it already had the basics that we, we learned from the, from the companies that they wanted. For example, it was very, very important to be decentralized. Absolutely important. In the previous startup, we were like very trendy. Hey, everything is going to be based on the cloud. So our server was centralized on the cloud. And we were trying to sell that. You know what? Companies say, no way. There's no way I'm going to put any of my binary, any of my resources on your cloud. This is not going to happen. I'm, I, I really want my server on-prem in my company. And we learned that. So the first version of Conan, it already includes a Conan server, an open source that could be hosted very easily by companies on-prem. And uh, the second biggest pain for the companies was to manage binaries. Typically, C++ projects are not small projects. They are big. And uh, the previous startup, it was all, always building from sources because, hey, the cloud, we have power, you can rebuild from sources all the time. No, you can't. It's basically impossible. And the only alternative you have, if you cannot build from sources all the time, is to manage the binaries. And that was the most consistent request that we were getting from, from companies in the previous startup. You have to manage the binaries. So this version also managed the binaries. 
Managed binaries means being able to build from sources the binaries when you don't have the binaries and caching, storing the binaries and reusing them later. Uh, it also includes the Conan.io was a public repository that when open source contributors could put their own Conan packages. And it was also very extremely flexible. The previous project only managed CMake because hey, CMake is the way to go, everybody's using CMake. You know what? No. There are tons of companies using just Visual Studio projects or using Visual Studio projects using make files, using scons, and using many different tools, including their proprietary build systems. Huge companies out there, they're using their proprietary build systems. And you, ha you have to deal with that. If you, either you propose a tool that manages that or they are not going to use it. So we knew it and we proposed something based on Python that is very, very flexible, being able to cope with any build system and being able to basically do whatever you want. If you have some special process you need to code it into the tool, you can. The, and this first version, very simple, it also uh, implemented the binary model. Let me introduce what is a package. A package is uh, a, a set of artifacts. One is the recipe. The recipe is a Python script that defines how to build a package and how to use a package, how, how to consume a package. And then for every, uh, uh, recipe, every re recipe or recipe, 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 for every recipe, you can have any number of binaries. Actually, for every different configuration that you use for Visual Studio 15, it's going to be a different binary than if you are building for Linux GCC 6, for example. Okay. This model is basically the same in the server and in the client side. The server acts as a storage, and the client side, the first thing we realize is that this is very efficient to be able to target the platform that you want. For example, if you're trying to install OpenCV or, I don't know, maybe Boost or other big libraries in Windows, you get a 1.5 gigabytes that contains all the configurations for release, debug, 64 bits, 32 bits for different flavors of Visual Studio. Okay? You don't want that. You want the experience that I was, I was showing earlier. If you want to install the things, get the things for my configuration. I don't need one gigabytes of binaries if I'm not going to use them. So in the, in the model of Conan, when you're installing, and if you are in Linux GCC 6, you only get the binary for Linux GCC 6. And the server can have hundreds of binaries, but you won't, you won't get them. So what is the, how do we identify the binaries? We get the configuration. The configuration is basically settings, and options. The settings are project-wide configuration, let's say the compiler, compiler version. It's typically something that you want to apply the same for all the, de all the dependencies. Okay, all the packages in your graph will share the same settings. And the options are something that are per package. For example, if it's been a static or the, uh, the start library, you can have in the same project, you can have a static library and you can have another library that is dynamic. You can choose that and you can choose per package. But otherwise, there are configuration. Every package will take this, will compute the hash, and the hash will be the binary identifier. It means if you hash again the same inputs, you get the same binary identifier. Okay, so with these premises, it was easy to write these, these Conan recipes. Okay, I'm going to show you. Okay, so because the question is, hey, in the previous example, who created the packages for OpenCV, for uh, SerumQ? Someone had to create the packages. So we realized that creating the packages should be as friendly, as powerful as possible. So this is a, a recipe. It's a Python script that is used to build packages. In this case, there are a few important things here. First, all of this, this is the metadata. This is the license, the author, the URL. You might skip most of them. Actually, I'm going to remove them just to be more, more clear. Then you have the configuration. You remember the hash that identifies the binary of the package? It's defined here. Here, in this example, I'm telling, A, this hello package, okay, if you change the operating system, 
or if you change the compiler, or if you change the build type or the architecture, you are going to get a different binary because those values will be hashed to a different thing. Okay? Actually, the compiler, internally, it has the compiler dot version, the compiler dot run, it has more, more things. Okay? But just to keep it simple. Typical example, uh, header only library. Which settings would you define here? Any idea? Any suggestions for a header only library? None at all. You can remove, for a header only package, you can remove the settings. Because no matter what the inputs are, the binary ID will always be the same. The hash of uh, an empty thing. Okay. The same thing for the static or dynamic. Here, you can configure if it is going to be a static or dynamic library. The options can be defaulted. It makes sense, hey, by default, I'm a static library. You cannot default the settings. You cannot default, hey, by default, I'm going to use Visual Studio because it, in Linux it doesn't make sense at all. It's something that, that comes from the tool chain, from the system. Okay. So this is the binary model. What defines what is important for me for this binary. And then the rest of the recipe are several methods. The first one, the build one. The build one calls your build system. If you have any proprietary build system here, you can run self.run, call whatever you want, and there it should be building the binaries. So what Conan has, has several helpers, build helpers, that will translate the, the Conan configuration to actual uh, a command line call. Let's say that the thing you have here in this helper is basically equivalent to calling in this way. Okay, it's calling CMake to configure the project with a parameter pointing to the source and a command line that will be translating the current settings. Like for example, if the compiler is Visual Studio, it will add the generator, the correct generator to the, command, to the CMake command line. Okay? But the idea is that it, this is not doing magic. Conan is not a build system. It, it will just call the build system. It integrates with, with different build systems, but uh, we have helpers here for Visual Studio, so you can actually build Visual Studio solutions for auto tools, um, for uh, Meson, for example. Okay, once you have the binary, you have your artifacts, you define which is your final package. Typically, you want to extract only the headers, uh, the libraries, maybe the license, and that's all. Okay, in this case, this copy is getting a copy all the headers and put them in the final package in a folder that is going to be called include. That's the typical layout of a, of a package. Wait, sorry. Okay, and the same for the libraries, the static library, dynamic libraries, and maybe the license should be, should be put here. By the way, some CMake fans here, raise your hands. Okay, you might be wondering, hey, Diego, but I, I already have my, my CMake install functionality. Right? I don't want to be, I don't want to repeat myself specifying which artifacts do I need to copy. Okay, you can remove the package method and write here cmake dot install. Okay, and you will be removing the, the completely the, the package method. But I wanted to show you the, the idea of how a recipe works. And the final information here is very important, and this cannot be implemented in CMake in a general way. This is the information for the consumers. This is telling the consumers, A, if you want to use this package, you need to link with a library that is called hello. That's the name of the, of the library you need to link with. Typical example that happens in Visual Studio in Windows. You need to link with a, a library, and then in debug mode, the library is called hello D. And then you are in your CMake list, Hey, if the IMD book, then the dependency is, is D. Okay, in this case, only the creator of the package will code that. And the consumers of the package will get it automatically. In this case, how do you code that? It will be something like, hey, if self settings uh, build type equal debug, then it will be something like this. You implement the code you want, the behavior you want, so the consumers, they don't need to figure out. They will automatically get it. Where do they get it? In the Conan Billionfold.cmake. 
Remember the file that was generated when we created, when we called the Conan install? That file contains the information from the package info method. Okay, so for example, here you can uh, add extra flags if you want and add extra defines, definitions for the consumers. You add them. So then you realize when you are using those dependencies, the generative uh, CMake will, will contain everything. Okay, so this is the recipe. How do we create the packages? Is Conan, let me make sure, yes. Conan create, Diego testing. Okay, so this is creating a package, a binary package with my default configuration. My default configuration is Visual Studio 15, 64 bits release using the, the dynamic runtime of Visual Studio. Okay, here it is building, calling CMake, and finally packaging the, the artifact. Okay, now if I check, all the process was local in my machine, of course, and it's the same that a CI server will be, will be running. Conan search that actually inspect what is installed in my machine. In my machine, I have these dependencies because they were installed from the, for the OpenCV example, and I also have this package that I just created locally. If I inspect with a Conan search this package, I will see that I have exactly one binary. One binary with this identifier, which is the hash of this, which is my default configuration. But the really great thing about Conan is, hey, you need to manage different architectures for your customer. For example, you also need to manage the 32 bits architectures. Okay. So then, you repeat the, the process and you specify, hey, my settings, my architecture is going to be 32 bits. By the way, who is hating that Ubuntu is aiming to deprecate 32 bits? Raise your hands. <laughs> no? You like it? <laughs> Come on, there are still many people using 32 bits applications. I know, I mean, they shouldn't. But they are. They, they roll. They roll back already. Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, so I repeated the process. I was able to build for 32 bits architecture. If I inspect my local cache, what is installed in my computer, now I will see that I have two binaries for 32 bits and for 64 bits architecture. Okay. Um, I want to show you one more thing. Okay, the packages were created. How do I know that if they work? Are they, will they work? How do I know it? So the best thing, and we realized the only way to check if our package is actually working is to use it in another project. Okay, for example, I will go to the OpenCV project, I will add hello to my requirements, I will do a conan install, and I will use the hello function in my project and to see that it's working, okay? The, the great thing is that it's not, necessary. it's not necessary. The Conan create has a functionality here that is called the test package. This, the Conan new command is created a template. It's a pre-configured template just to simplify for demos and everything. So this test package here contains a project. In this case, it's using CMake, but you could use a different build system if you want contains a Conan file, contains a recipe, because it's a consumer project. It's an independent project that will use the hello package that I'm just creating. And it will contain an example, CPP, that is basically a call to the hello function to check that if everything links and runs correctly. So if I do this and I create my package, the first step will be the same. It will be creating the package, calling CMake, building the library, and packaging the library. But once it is done, okay, it will be actually running, I don't know, okay, it's cross building. Sorry, if it is cross building and cross building to 32 bits, uh, it detects cross building, it will, run, it will not run the application. But if I, I run for 64, 64 bits, 
it will do the same and it will actually be calling a main, an executable that is using the package, is using the hello function in the library that is inside the package. So this is the way to use the test package, is the way to check that the package is correctly created even before sharing with the team. Why? Because many things can, can fail. You forgot to package the headers. You forgot to package the libraries. Okay? Or maybe you did a mistake in your build and you are building with the wrong binary configuration and it won't link at all. Okay, so this was basically, as you have seen, that was particularly all of it in the first proposal, in the first version that we released, in 10,000 lines of code. And then something magic happened, is that we started to get some traction. And we started to get some traction in the both worlds that is absolutely necessary. This is the logo here of the Bing Crafters. The Bing Crafters is a community of open source users that uh, they started to love Conan and they started to create Conan packages. And now they are the biggest contributors to, to open source Conan packages. But also, very, very early, like in two months after the first release, there were already companies that they were desperate for, for a solution of, for, for, for managing packages, for managing dependencies. And they quickly started to onboard Conan. And we started to get like big users, like, like these companies, like, do you know the Plex Media Server? Yeah, it's built with, with Conan. Okay, and they were like one of the first users. So then, okay, this is working. This is already delivering value. They're happy with it. And then we started to iterate. One of the first questions that we, we got uh, very early, you know, you, ha you, ha you are a package manager, you are in Reddit, someone put you in Reddit, and then people and trolls will, hey, this is a C++ package manager. What is it not written in C++? Okay, so actually it's not a bad question, but then I troll back and for example, hey, our most famous package is OpenSSL, that is actually C. Should it be written in C? No, no way. Hey, what? <laughs> Why? Okay, so we did our research. In the previous startup, we learned a lot of things. We were asking companies and not a single company was developing their dev tools, their dependency management in-house in C++. No one, but 60 to 70% of them, they were using Python. The other 30 were using typically scripts, shell scripts, or other scripting language, okay? But 60 to 70, they were really using Python. So that was what the companies were doing. So then it totally made sense, made sense hey, Conan uses Python for the recipes, is what users are doing, it's easier to implement it in Python. And that was a, a, a great decision. And then we started to iterate. When, when you start getting users, then they will start with, with requests. And they say, hey, I have this project here. I, I'm running Visual Studio. Please, I need integration, uh, more easy integration with Visual Studio. Okay. And then some users will say, hey, I'm using Visual Studio 2008. You say, what? Yeah, it, it has a totally different, different system. Okay. Um, by the way, I didn't explain much about the generators. Uh, when I specified the CMake generator, when I did the Conan install, if instead that I specify Visual Studio, I get a Visual Studio dot props file. I get a properties file that you can directly load into, the, into your IDE and you can use your dependencies directly from native Visual Studio. And you, know, you don't need CMake at all. It works the same for every, for every build system like QMake. So if you're using QMake and you use the QMake generator, Conan will generate a QMake file for you that you can integrate in your build, okay? So the users were, were asking for this, hey, I'm using QMake, I'm using Visual Studio, I need better tooling. They could already do it, like the first, the first release, okay? But I want better integrations. So then we had to make a, a decision or a trade-off. What to do? Should we actually go back to Visual Studio 2008? It takes time to implement things. For example, we support, and I think we still support, CMake 2.8.12. Most of the people, they would say, hey, no, go for modern CMake, use just modern CMake, whatever. Yes, still there are many companies that they are really tied. They, they cannot upgrade for many reasons. We are not judging that. If we can help, we will. And that's the decision we made. So there is a Visual Studio leg uh, legacy generator that will generate the correct properties file for Visual Studio 2008. And that's more or less the policy that we have been trying to implement with Conan. Listen to the users, 
If they say that in, they need support for CMA to eight, why not? If we can provide it, we really will try. And of course, uh, we have for many other, this is just a partial view of the generators, and you can write your own. So we have a, a, an extension point. You, can, you get like the dependency information, and if you want to output a file that can be used for your own build system or your own variant of build system like CMake, you, you can. If you are a, a fan of fine package, okay, there is a fine package generator that will, that will manage to, to that you, you will be able to use fine package in your CMake list too. And of course, many other integrations. We have integration with Travis, with Abayor. Okay, what if I type this and I created the package for uh, two different architectures, I could type different things. For example, I, ca I could introduce a wrong architecture. What happens if I introduce a wrong input for, for the binary settings, it will tell me something like this. Hey, build type can only be debug or release or whatever, but cannot be wrong. Okay? Or if I just write a typo here, I type build hype, it will say build hype doesn't exist. What you can have is architecture, uh, compiler, build type, whatever. Okay? So where is this information? There is a file in the, in the Conan cache that is called settings. And settings, at the very beginning, it had this information. It was just a couple of operating systems, a couple of architectures, a couple of build types, and a few compiler versions. Okay? This is the, the validation of the inputs. Okay? And this also defines the possible binaries that you can get. Okay? These are the, com combining them, you get the different hashes for the different binaries like this. Okay? This was our first proposal, very early. And then we started to get uh, GitHub tickets, GitHub issues, people saying, hey, I'm using a package from Conan, and I'm getting this. I say, what? Who knows which, which error are these? Raise your hands. Who wants to guess? STDD. Exactly. But you know what? We thought that we were doing it right because we were using Travis and Abayor to build packages. Okay? And we were using, we were building binaries for different compilers. Okay? And we were different binaries for, let's say, GCC 6.2. Okay? By default, you should be getting C, the libstdc++11 in 6.2, right? That's the default, right? No, it isn't. It is not, you know, it depends on your operating system. If you ha are using an old distro, like an Ubuntu 14, for example, and you install GCC 6.2, you don't get libstdc++11. You don't get it at all, because it cannot upgrade. It cannot upgrade the, the distro. There are other applications that depends on the libstdc++, and then it cannot bump it, and then by default, in Ubuntu 14, with GCC 6, you are linking with libstdc++, not libstdc++ 11. And this was an interesting ABI incompatibility story that we, okay, and then we realized, okay, yeah, our mistake, we need to model that. And then we, we added this to GCC. And now that's great. You can select. You say, hey, I will have, if I link with libstdc++, I will get a different binary, that if I link with libstdc++11, that will be a different binary. And now, now you can manage. You can build binaries for GCC 6.2 that will be using one or the other, or, yeah, or both if you need to. If you need to run in older distros and in modern distros, you can do it because you have the binaries for the both libstdc++. Okay, and then we started to say, what? This is going to be difficult, right? So what if we don't support the binary? This, this is going to be crazy. Every, every change, every possible thing that can change in the build is going to break the binaries, right? So what if we don't, let's don't do it. We don't, we don't, we don't support the binaries. So the truth is that we, do, we did two things. 
First, we started to gather the, the feedback and the pull request from the community. And they were saying, hey, I, I'm using GCC 4.1. And they were submitting a pull request to add it to, the, to the, our default settings. Okay? And I'm using, we have support there for uh, Android, iOS, uh, watchOS, tvOS, FreeBSD, Solaris, many things that the community were, were creating in them. Okay, these are the, the settings that we are using. The, these define different binaries. That's great, okay? And our default settings have been created. We, there are also support for QNX and Neutrino, different compilers. So this is actually the composition. These two, two slides are our default settings. You, you don't need to, to have a, a look into, into it. The most important thing here is that we learned that it's absolutely impossible to come with a complete ABI model. This is not going to happen. We're, we are not going to solve it. No one in the world is going to solve it. Still, the companies, they want the binaries. They really need to manage the binaries. It's critical for them. So what we came is an extension model for the ABI compatibility. Okay. Let's say in our default previous version, okay, we didn't model at all another thing. It's the glibc. It worked pretty well for 95% of our users that are using modern, relatively modern distros, the, the glibc is compatible, and it was working, okay? But then suddenly some enterprise users, they were saying, hey, I have a problem because I'm using Red Hat 6, okay? And the binaries in Red Hat 6, they are linked with a different glibc than the binaries in Red Hat 6, in Red Hat 7, sorry, they are using a different glibc, okay? No problem, we are not doing that. Okay, it's, it's not in our default settings because the largest community doesn't need them. But if you want, you can add them. Take your settings.yaml file and in Linux are the definition that you want. Hey, you want to model the distro? You're free. Put there the distros that you are maintaining and then suddenly for every one of these, you have a different binary. Okay, so you can model to the level that you want your ABI compatibility. If you want to go down to the glibc, you can add glibc there, another range of versions. And then you will have a different binary for every glibc version that you want to manage. Okay, then we came with something relatively powerful. Okay, so we, we, were, we, we were having already users using Conan, managing the, binar the binaries, and using our server. But then there was a feature request very important for, from companies. We said, hey, this is great. Your Conan server and Conan, Conan rocks, we are using it, but we need integration with Artifactory. Artifactory is a server that can host any, any package type, Docker images, NPM packages, Java Maven packages, okay? And the companies were already using that. And they say, no, I don't want to maintain another Conan server. I'm not going to do this. Please integrate with Artifactory, okay? And actually, um, there's a story there. It was a user that was a, a JFlow customer, okay? A very big one, let's say top Fortune, Fortune 50, Fortune, Fortune 10, something there. They say, hey, no, we are using Conan. We are very happy, but please integrate with Artifactory. Say, eh, no, we don't know, probably. They say, I'm going to fire an email. And they did an introduction email. And then we started to, to talk with JFrog. And then the, the feed was, was like, like perfect. Why? Because be honest, in the client, there is no business at all. The business is in the server, the server side, okay, Artifactory, okay? Is it possible that we can be full-time working in Conan? It's almost impossible because there's no business. Who is going to pay for that? Is it possible that we develop a, a server that is a premium server that we charge for it and then we get our salaries? Okay, great. Now you are competing against Artifactory. That is a huge company and already has all the customers. So in a way, so the, 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 the fit was, was absolutely perfect. So in December uh, 2016, we joined JFrog. We joined JFrog, basically my, my, my colleague and, and me, we started and it remained as, as, as a full open source. Still, it doesn't change. It's an open source project, MIT license. It is just sponsored by JFrog. So we get our, our full-time salaries to work in the project for free. And then we have something that is amazing. It, it's, we keep the open source server, okay, because we are open source, but now we have integration with Artifactory. 
an artifactory I'm going to show you. This is artifactory. This is the UI. Okay. Here I have, you remember the OpenCV packages? I have them here. And I actually have the packages. This is the Linux one for GCC. This is the Windows one that I was using. Actually, this one is for Jocto, for an embedded Linux that I was using a, a few days ago in a, in a, in a demo. Okay. So these are the packages that I'm using. They are open source packages, okay, but I got them from the public repo and I put them into my artifactory because I want this demo to be isolated from the internet. I don't have internet connection here. So I'm running my artifactory here as I would be running my artifactory on-prem in my company. So I don't depend on the outside world. All my dependencies are here. Okay. So this is artifactory. It can host any package type, as I was telling. Here you can see all the dependencies that I have, my uh, uh, like uh, serum queue, uh, message pack, all the dependencies of OpenCV, and so on. You can see these bin crafters, these are the open source community. This is why the name is here, because the username is bin crafter. They are using to create their packages. Okay. So this is artifactory. Okay, that's great, because I was creating some hello packages, remember? I had two pre-built binaries for hello here. I want to share them with my team. I want my team to be able to consume the hello packages, not be rebuilding from source again and again because hello is so huge, we, we don't want to do that. So that's great, I can do that. It's Conan upload, I will be uploading hello to my remote artifactory and I will upload all the binaries. Yes, I want. And I have here my two binaries for 32 and for 64 bits. And that's all. That's all you need to do. Now, every CI build of every package will put them here. For every Linux, Windows, OS X, embedded, cross-platform, all the binaries will be there, which is amazing. You don't need to maintain any other piece of infrastructure out there. Okay, so this artifactory thing was great. They were also providing a public repository. So the, the, it's called Bintray, Bintray Conan Center, where the open source community, they are putting the packages there. And this still was great, but we were missing something. Hey, sorry, okay. So uh, the first thing that, that you get also with Artifactory is you can scale to huge organizations. So if you have development teams all around the globe, the globe Artifactory can scale to that. It can do replicas of the binaries. So every development team, they have their own fast replicas of the data. It can have high, high availability. It can integrate with any permission system, LDAP, you name it, it will integrate. So if you have especially big development teams, you probably will, will love it. But still, we say, hey, come on, Conan is open source, we are a community thing. And then JFRO uh, released Artifactory Community Edition, it's Artifactory CE, okay, which is totally free. You can use it for commercial purposes today. Just download it, put it on-prem on your server, and you can st uh, start using Conan and Artifactory together for free today. No trial, just for life. Okay, that was, that was great. Now we have a powerful client, we have a powerful server, we keep growing. Who knows what, what picture is that? From the movies, it's called The Wheel of Pain. It's w w where Conan get, gets strong. Okay, so we were, okay, Conan is great. Those companies and those users were telling us, Conan is great. Is it possible to take, let's say, a tool like CMake and put it in a Conan package and use it. Say, wait, why not? We have a build method. There is actually nothing C++ there. We have a package method. The actually recipes are, are very generic, right? So we tried, and actually, yes, there is a concept that's called build requires. Let me, it's not this one. It's 
I'm going to print the CMake version here. I'll remove this. And I'm going to create my package. Okay, here it is calling the build method. And it's printing CMake 3.7. Okay, why? It's obvious. Because CMake is the version that I have installed. Okay, but what if I can do in a different places? I can define a file here. I can define that I'm going to require for the, for the build and exclusively for the build. If my banner is there, I don't need CMake at all. I will use CMake, okay? And also another powerful feature of Conan is that I can use version ranges. I can specify, hey, I want to use CMake any version greater than 3.9, okay? If I do this, okay, this will take CMake it will, from a, from a package, it will download CMake, put it in the system in my Conan cache, not in the system, in my Conan cache, and inject it to create the package with CMake. So I can do a Conan create and specify my file. And here it is downloading CMake. In this case, the latest is 3.14 because it satisfies the, the dependency. It takes a, a bit to decompress. Come on, this is the demo effect. Come on, a bit more. Okay, that's it. And now it is firing the build of the package. Okay, it is using CMake 3.14. And one of the great things is that it didn't change my, my system CMake. I can do this for any number of CMake versions that I want. Okay, so Conan was pretty great and one of, probably one of the hardest and, but also best decisions that we made in January 2018 is we were releasing one zero. And one zero for us, it was not a feature release. It was a commitment release. It was a from now on, we are not breaking. Your recipes created for, with Conan 1.0 keep working as today. This is an stability commitment. It's something that we actually underestimated for coming from the open source. Hey, come on, it's not necessary that whatever. JFrog told us, hey, you really need to do this. Customers are saying, if you are not 1.0, they are not going to use it. Just by company policy. They don't use zero point thing, uh, th th zero point something things. That's it. So we went for 1.0. It has been very hard. Not breaking, not breaking is really hard. In this sense, I really, really admire Microsoft Windows. They are so good at not breaking things. It's really, really hard. But I think we, we have managed pretty good. So from 1.0, uh, one year and a half ago, we have been stable. We have not breaking users. Sometimes we, we break. We are humans, we do books. If we are reported other regressions, we fix it probably the next day. We revert the changes, we do whatever is necessary to revert the, the behavior. Okay, so Conan, ha from the 1.0, it has been getting many extensions, many, many, let's call enterprise or team things. For example, the configuration is tall. Re remember the settings.yaml? You can change that, that, okay? And you can use your, your own definitions. You can have your own remotes. Okay, you don't want to connect by the default, the Conan Center, the public one. You want to connect to your own artifactory, okay? And you want it, all your developers or your CI servers, they will connect to the artifactory you want, okay? The configurations, uh, everything that is part of the Conan configuration, you can put in an artifactory, in a zip file, in a git repo, and you can do Conan config install. It will get it and will configure your Conan installation so it matches the other developers, the other teams with uh, everything customized for you. Other things, okay, Conan is great, but I need a policy so my developers or whatever is not doing a mistake of creating a package that will be using uppercase. We 
typical, you know, policy, okay, is something that we cannot implement, cannot, cannot force those policies. If, if you want to use uppercase packages, you are completely free to use them. But if you want to extend Conan behavior to implement what you want, you have hooks for practically everything. Pre-build, post-build, pre-package, post-package. Pre-export, pre-export is the first step when you have a recipe and you put in the Conan cache, is the first step that is done. In this case, this hook is checking the reference, the name, and if the reference contains some uppercase, it's raising an exception. And it won't allow to create Conan packages with this hook if you put it. Python requires something that we don't like is don't repeat yourself. So when you are maintaining, and there are companies maintaining, let's say, several hundreds of different packages, okay, they come up with patterns. Hey, I'm always using the same build method. I'm always using the same package method. I'm always using this and that. I don't want to repeat myself. It is somehow possible to put that in a Conan package and use it. And the answer is, okay, it was not possible, but we made it possible. So our first option is, okay, use, use Python pip. If it is Python code, you can put it in a pip package, put it in an artifactory, and install it just on another Python package. But they were insisting, no, no, no. I'm loving Conan, I want it to be a Conan package. Can I put Python code in a Conan package? And we made it. So we had to invert control, it was a bit tricky in the implementation, but you can do this. You can do a Python requires, use the reference of another pack Conan package, and that will give you access to the module. And in, from that module, you can get the, a whole Conan file class, inherit from it, and basically just have parameterized recipes that will extend some other recipe in, in, a, in a Python require. If you are using some SCM like Git, and you want every package, when you create the package to capture the Git commit, you can do it because it's Python. You do a Git something, capture the output, put it in a file something, we automated it with the SCM component. This auto is capturing that automatically. So the origin URL and the commit will be changed, will be replaced in the recipe when you do a Conan create. We have plugins for many things. With CI, for example, there is a Jenkins plugin that will help to integrate and, and use Conan and Artifactory together. We have plugins for the CLion IDE and the Visual Studio one that is pretty, is brand new. It has been out there for two weeks, I think, but it's also a typical thing that they, teams of developers, they are using Visual Studio, they want to automate further things. So those are things that we are, we are implementing. Okay, so um, what is the present of Conan today? Conan as a package manager works pretty well. Okay, it does lots of things, it's very powerful, it can integrate with many things, but Still, companies are pushing, pushing further. In, with, in CI, they want to perform large-scale CI uh, workflows. That means they have a dependency graph of 100 Conan packages, and they want a developer to do a change in one package, and they want to rebuild downstream all the packages that are affected by that. That is complicated, that is, and that is not part of, of a package manager, let's say. But we are coming with, with the, tool, the tooling necessary to implement that. For example, the revisions. Revisions are automatic versions. You do a change in a recipe, you don't need to bump it because we will be using the hash of the contents of the recipe as an ultimate revision. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing, it's, it's no longer, it's, there's not uh, much more. We are implementing log files. Okay, log files as a snapshot of all your dependencies. So when you rebuild, you are automatically guaranteed that you are doing exactly the same build as you were doing before. Some statistics, Conan is doing pretty well. Uh, for example, in, in PyP, we get like 127,000 uh, downloads per month. Uh, the documentation that for me is a pretty, pretty good metric of usage. Come on, nobody is reading the documentation if they don't have to, okay? It's, it's read like more than 100,000 times per month with long stays, like several minutes long. In GitHub, we are pretty popular, getting to 3,000 stars, 150 contributors to the code base, just to the code base of the tool. We have many other projects, packages, that they do not count. It's just for the, for the tool self itself, uh, for the tool chain itself. Um, are you in CPP Lang Slack? Some of you? It's a good resource for C++ tool. The other one is Discord. 
is also very, very friendly. But I would say the Conan community in the CPP Lang Slack, there is a Conan channel there. It has like more than 850 people. They are also very friendly. If you plan to use Conan, whatever, use it because they will really, they will really help. It's actually the second most active channel in the CPP Lang Slack. The technology channel. The first one is Boost and the second one is Conan. It's also bigger than, than CMA. For example, in Bintray, we are getting more than 1 million package downloads per month. This is several terabytes of transfers because packages are typically, typically big, which is great because the default is that companies, they are not using Bintray. They are not using the public repo. They are do doing the same that I did. They put their packages in their own artifactory because they don't want to depend on binaries from the internet. And that's the total right decision. And still, we get more than 1 million package downloads per month. We are being used by, in production by hundreds of companies. It's very difficult to estimate because we are open source. We don't have much telemetry, some data from Artifactory, and some customers that, that just tell us. We estimate many hundreds, maybe getting to 1,000 companies using Conan in, in production. The team keeps growing. We're already five plus two, seven people, full time working on, on Conan. Think about it. If you say, no, no, I will implement my own solution myself. Okay, you have a, already a team of seven people working for years for that. And the future, what is the future of, of, of Conan? Well, so maybe, maybe you, if you have any problem with, with binaries, if you consider, hey, probably my build times are big, I need to manage many different binaries because I'm targeting different platforms. I want, hey, probably I want to migrate my compiler. I am building everything as today with one compiler. I want to upgrade to latest C++ standard. I need a new compiler. I don't want to break anything, okay? Conan will do it for you because it will manage your binaries for every new compiler that you want to, to, to use. Uh, it manages any number of versions. If you want to use Boost 160 for one project and one Boost 161 for another, that's totally perfect. If you want to use a static or dynamic for different projects, totally perfect. You can have as many different binaries, versions, and configurations installed on your cache at the same time. And of course, having all your binaries in a centralized source of truth, like this artifactory, is, is basically uh, amazing. It, it doesn't work only at the scale, at a world scale, but it's also the gate for, for uh, uh, DevOps. You know, in DevOps, all the other languages, they are doing amazing things. They are releasing as fast, it's incredibly fast. And sometimes in C++, I think we are a bit behind because we, are, we have been lacking those tools. We, Conan is the gate to j Artifactory and then to a bunch of other things that will, will, will help us to, to improve. Okay, so if you are interested in Conan, I will be here in Toronto for three more weeks. I, I'm available, so if you want me to visit your company or whatever, just tell me. Write me to this email, I will be reading it. Or, or talk to me after the, after the talk. Also, CPPCon, we will have a full day workshop there, hands-on. All the exercises, all that we have been talking about here will be actually practice. Okay, so it's a, it's a great way to get into Conan in just one day. Okay, and it's also in CPPCon, which is a great opportunity to engage with the C++ community, learn about all the C++ things. It's a great conference. So if you have been thinking about, uh, about this, Please uh, register into this, this workshop. And that's all. Thanks very much for this opportunity. And if you have any questions, I would love to, to answer them. Right. Thank you, Diego. Um, so before you ask a question, just take the mic. Thank you. So question? Hi, Diego. Thanks for this. This is this is really great. Um, just a quick question about how you specify version ranges for your dependency. So if I want to say I want to stay within a specific range of versions, knowing that perhaps the next major version, uh, could you uh, perhaps show that off? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the difference between pin versions and, and version ranges are the brackets. So this will look exactly for 3.9.7, point zero, sorry. And if you're using the brackets, hey, come on. This means a version range. So we are using the uh, a port of the node sember specification. 
So this means that you can use something like, like this, for example, or you can use something like this space uh, lower than zero. So that's the, the typical implementation of version ranges. That's good that you took that because that's pretty familiar format to a lot of people, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is the, is the standard, is the, in theory, it's a, it's a port of the standard for, for Sember. So yeah, it's not perfect, the implementation. Is not, we didn't implement it. It's a, a Python package out there. So it might be lacking some things, but in theory, it is the. Hi. Um, I actually used Conan a few months ago at my old employer, and it was a great tool. I wasn't successful in integrating it in our product. And the reason was that the project used a lot of open source packages that were packaged by Fedora and Ubuntu and all this sort of stuff. And the maintainers were not interested in becoming maintainers of open source software and maintaining all these Conan specifications and dealing with security vulnerabilities and things like that. So how do you sort of think about the overlap between like maintaining Conan packages and all the existing community and infrastructure that exists for that stuff. Okay, so there are uh, different approaches that you, you want to do. This is something that I don't have the full response because the response is actually should be given by the community. So uh, from the Conan side, you can do several things. We have a system requirements method in Conan recipes that you can actually use to be calling. We have other kind of helpers there that will automate calling uh, apt-get, for example. So if you want a Conan recipe to be doing some apt-get installation of some packages in the system, you can integrate that in recipe. It's not very clean. I mean, it's not the best thing to do, but it is doable. You can do it in recipes. Otherwise, yes, you need to either go yourself to that package, take the sources and create a Conan recipe around it and to create the packages, uh, or talk to the community, talk to the authors, try them to, yeah. The truth is that, the, another story is, uh, Conan has been moving forward uh, in a different way than any other package managers. O basically, other package managers from the very beginning, open source was pretty strong, and then the companies and enterprise when, when were following, okay? In Conan, it's pretty much the, the opposite. We are very strong, extremely strong in indus industry, Automotive embedded is, is, is crazy. Open source is, is, is falling behind. They are very slow. They say, no, I don't see the value of using Conan packages. Hey, please, we have tons of users. They want to use your library. We are telling you we are request, there are requests in, in Conan. Hey, I, want, I need this library for my project. Actually, the Bing crafters, it is the, project, the community, it started as, as people from companies that were saying, hey, I need a cute package. I need an OpenCV package. And they, they started to gather together and say, hey, let's collaborate, let's try to come up with an OpenCV, OpenCV recipe that works for all of us. And that's the origin of Bing Crafters. Thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering, so tools like CC Cache and this CC, how would you go in, into incorporating it into a build that uses Conan? Or can you, would you just continue to specify it in the CMake list or? Y yeah, so uh, regarding the uh, build, build cache, uh, there are, uh, we have users that, that have been, and you can check in GitHub that have been reporting, I guess, uh, because you can do it, use it then perfectly in your build system. Hey, I'm caching this. The only thing is the path to the files that typically in the, those systems there are absolute paths and they will be caching the artifacts by the absolute path in the system. So if you are changing the, the Conan cache from one location to another, it will need to rebuild. Otherwise it works. So the only point of failure that we identified for, for build caches are is uh, Windows. Why? Because in Windows we have also have the problem of, lo of long paths. Okay, you know in Windows, now it has been partially fixed, not, not, not really. So in Windows, we have a trick. For paths that are longer than 260 characters, you can have a sort path feature that will put them in a shorter path somewhere else. It will mm, compact the path to somewhere else. That path was random. And then the people using Zcash, they were complaining, hey, if you use a random path every time, then the Zcash won't work. 
So we work around it. Now the, the sort paths are more deterministic and that will help. Otherwise, it was you activated, the, the files are in one place as long as you keep building them uh, in, that, in that location, it works. And uh, it plays nicely with distributed builds, like say the CC? Uh, I am not aware of, uh, actually we were pending of, uh, of using uh, Incredibuild for, for, for using uh, distributed builds. In theory, it is possible. I mean, the build, you are just calling your build system as if you were calling directly in your tool or in a command line uh, script. So everything that you can parallelize in your own scripts can be parallelized in, in Conan. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions? Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm aware, but somewhat dimly, of the newish study group for tooling uh, in the C++ committee. I wonder if you've done work with them and uh, where they're at and what you think of the work they're doing. Okay, uh, the study group, that's a great question. I'm part of the, of the C++ standard committee, the national body of Spain. I, I work there, I follow the standards uh, closely. Uh, I have not been able to, to assist an international meeting for SG15, that is the, is the group for, for tooling, but I read basically everything. So right now, uh, they are basically completely focused on modules. You know, modules, they are coming with C++20. They are going to be great as, as, as contracts, concepts, and the other things. The only problem with, with modules is that they don't exactly know how build systems are going to manage it. They don't know it. So uh, their higher priority for the study group is to come up with some, actually some, it's not a standard because it will be a technical report, I think. Some conventions for build systems to implement the models. So that's basically the highest priority. There has been a lot of talking about package management and build systems, both. Uh, it seems that it's not going to happen fast. So there is right now a paper for Cologne meeting that is trying to specify like the interface for an installed package. This is something that I love. Actually, someone knows about Vector of Bull. No, not the mistake, but the person. Okay, Vector of Bull has two interesting projects, C++ projects. One is Pitchfork. It's a standard layout for a C++ project. And the other one is called Libman. It's a manifest for libraries. In either case, like something clo cl similar to the proposal, the paper that is now for Cologne meeting, or Libman, it would be absolutely amazing for us. Yeah, because it, it will simplify so much of the generators and that stuff. So actually my idea, I wanted to propose the Liebman approach for not Cologne, but for Belfast. Uh, so far, I've been so busy with Conan that I've not been able to, <laughs> to find some time. So that's my goal. So let's see how, how it works. I am a bit skeptical. It's so difficult and you know, in C++ committee, it's so difficult to get consensus about anything full build systems and package management there, and it seems that it's not going to happen anytime soon. Any additional questions? This is more for your usage side. As a client, if I want, if, if I'm using Conan, can I specify that wherever it downloads, it downloads to a specific directory somewhere that on my system just for my personal organization or does it always download to a Conan managed directory? Yeah, so when you install Conan packages, they are installed in a Conan cache. The, the location of the Conan cache, you can put it wherever you want. And you can, config, you can configure the Conan cache and you can have a, a different Conan cache per project if you want. Typically CI servers, will have a clean Conan cache for every build, okay? That doesn't mean that you will have the, the artifacts like in the bare path because you will have the package name, version, user, channel, uh, package, the hazard of the package. You, you will get inside the cache, you will get like the full path that, that differentiates. If you want, if you want to get the artifacts, the headers and the libraries, extract them from the package and put them somewhere like let's say you want to distribute them, that's totally fine. You want the DLLs, you want to get them out of the package and put them beside your, your executable. 
you, there are two things in Conan. Is one is called the imports that will take things from the cache and put in your in your system, or the deploy. The deploy will is similar. Basically, the idea is to get things from the cache and put them in your system for your usage. It's typically that you only do for final deployment, not for development. For development, you want things typically in the cache. Debugging build or something that I need the DLL to run uh, from the same directory or, or something like that. Yeah, exactly. For that, that the, the typical usage of imports is to copy DLLs from the packages to put them in your current working directory so the executable finds them and can use can use them easily while you are working. That's the use case of imports for the DLLs. Last call, questions? Uh, hi, I'm just curious if, um, if Conan uh, supports uh, verifiable builds anyway. So if you want to, um, if you have a compiler, like GCC often has non-deterministic builds, it puts like timestamps and stuff. Uh, and if you want to verify an independently distributed binary was actually compiled from legitimate, legitimate source code and doesn't have a backdoor, uh, does Conan have any support for verifiable builds? I wish. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, a huge problem that uh, the builds actually are not reproducible for most build systems because they will embed the, the timestamp. And every time you build exactly the same scores, you will get a different binary with a different hash. Yeah, exactly. So let's say in that regard, I would love build systems and compilers to, to, to do that. Uh, we, we are aiming for the, one of the DevOps, I know DevOps is kind of a buzzword these days, and, but there is one thing that is a, like a principle there, it's called you only build once, things, forever. You never rebuild. If you're building, again, it's, it's a different build, it's a different product. You cannot treat it as it is the same, the same thing. So that's what we are aiming. You build just once, put it in an artifactory, and that's going to be forever. That doesn't mean, we, we aim a strong, to achieve re reproducibility, and one of the things are the, are the log files, to be able to guarantee that you're using exactly the same, the same uh, dependencies that you were using two years ago when you first built that thing. But you cannot, we cannot guarantee that uh, a given build. Said that, the other day, one modern compiler, one, I think it was, it was a GCC, I was building a static library, and I, I was surprised because I got the same hash building it several times. And it was a static library. And I need, I need to check it because I was, what? what? No, no, this is not what, what I, it used to be. So I don't know if it, they already change it or it's a change in the new CMake, uh, latest CMake managed to do something with that. But I was surprised. I need to check it. There's been a lot of work that was done on verifiable builds. Like uh, almost all of Debian is now buildable as a verifiable build. So maybe it was some change that was made to the toolkit yeah. toolchain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I, th I think it was, it was definitely in, in Ubuntu. And it was, uh, yeah, it was an Ubuntu, Ubuntu thing. I think it was built in CMake with, uh, so sorry, uh, setlib with CMake in Ubuntu. So yeah, but I still don't know. I know, I know there is a lot of work is still, is still not there. I wish that all the builds were, if we, we manage that all the compilers and build systems do that, it would be amazing for C++, amazing, but it's too much for, for us. Thanks for the great talk. Uh, I have a question on the package dependency graph. Say my project has two, two library dependency called library A and library B. And library A also depends on library B. So in Conan, can I specify the, uh, uh, as I am a user of the library A, can I specify that library A will, will use my custom build of library B. Say I, I have library B updated to the latest version. Yep. I, uh, so how could, how could we do that in yeah. Canon? Yeah, uh, th that, that's a good question. Uh, so Conan implements the, let's say the standard or the typical dependency management mechanism. There are several of them, like for example, conflicts, conflict detection and conflict resolution. If you have a diamond, you have library A depending on C1 and library B depending on C2, and they are in the same graph, that's a conflict. You cannot depend on the same, the same library two different versions in the same build. That's impossible. That's one thing. Conan will help identify that, and it will provide a mechanism to be able to override upstream dependencies. 
So let's say if you have B that depends on, on package A version one, and your consumer application here says, hey, I want to use, actually I want to use A version two. It will override upstream the dependency graph. It will be overriding the, the dependencies, forcing to use the, the versions that you want. Not only the versions. Let's say that the B is saying, hey, by default, I'm using package A as a static library. And you want to force upstream everyone to use to be a dynamic library, you can say it. Hey, cert equal true for all the dependencies upstream. And it will go upstream the, the dependency graph, overriding those values and defining. So let's say the consumer always has priority and can define what happens upstream. That was a good number of questions. Yeah, so. that's good, yeah. All right, thanks again to Diego. Um, there, one round more, round of applause. So, thank you. In, in the tradition of oh, the no. C++ yes. plus user group, a little box of chocolates for you. Okay. Yep, you and your kids. Great, thank you. Yep. <laughs> so our, we're taking the summer off. So no event in July or August. Uh, stay tuned to the uh, meetup. We'll be announcing our event in September. Uh, it's still being finalized. Um, if you're interested in speaking at a future C++ TO event, uh, please contact us. We are always looking for speakers. And if you need help putting together a proposal or presentation, there are many people on uh, the C++ you know, user groups, like the Discord or Slack, that are willing to help you put that together. We're also looking for sponsors, as always. If you're interested or know someone who might be, please contact us. And um, please raise your hands if you're looking to be hired. All right, and um, show your hands if you're looking to hire. All right. <laughs> so Something. Find, find that person. Um, uh, there's some dessert in back, some cookies. Go grab some cookies, socialize a little bit, and uh, thank you for coming.